Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. I'm a little out of breath. I just finished filming a video in here for my Peter Does Stuff channel and um, talking about little Boo Radley. Where are you at, Boo Radley? Oh, he's way over there. Well, hi, Mr. Boo Radley. How are you doing? He's sitting on the very end of the bed. Talking about Boo Radley, talking about pets, things like that. And then I ran downstairs to get these books, and I ran back upstairs. Whoo! So, did he just jump down? Oh, no, he's sitting on the other end of the bed still. Um, so, I'm a little out of breath, but it is so windy today outside in Indianapolis. It's like 70, 71 degrees. It's beautiful. I mean, it's not beautiful. It's cloudy and gray fall day, but it's like beautiful as far as the temperature and the wind and stuff like that. If you're just sitting there, it's really nice. But to film a video, I'm going to film my vlog outside. It's, I mean, even when I was on the phone, I was talking to people and they were like, okay, like I can't hear you. I mean, it's like really, really windy. windy. There's like a wind advisory app. So I thought, well, I'm going to film some of my videos inside today. It's so funny that that seems so weird to me to film videos inside, like in front of the ring light and stuff like that. <laughs> Which I try to do my best to film other places, because I don't know, like, I don't know if I've outgrown that phase. I mean, I'm sure this winter I'll go back to it. Um, do you hear that wind outside? Like, I mean, it's crazy. I don't know if I've, like, grown out, outgrown that phase of, like, sitting in the chair. Are you coming over here, boo? This is boo's new favorite blanket that I got him from Costco. It was $7.50. Um... So I don't know if I've outgrown that phase of sitting in the chair with the ring light. I haven't made a video, like a drama video there, in so long. It's so interesting. If, if this one of these meditations, I haven't even looked, but if they're about change today, I will just like be like, okay, this is the universe speaking to me. Because I feel like in so many areas of my life, I'm like, I feel like I'm going through a transition period in my life, you know, for so many different reasons. And I feel like that's one of them. Like, I feel like I sat in that chair for like six and a half years. And I really wish I would have figured it out earlier to sit outside on the front porch and film videos because I've really enjoyed that this summer. And even into the fall, I mean, we're like, you know, into the first week of, well, almost to the end of the first week of November, and I'm still filming videos outside. So I don't know how long that's going to last. Maybe we'll make it, you know, through the whole winter filming out there with a foot of snow, but we'll see. Okay, so I brought the two Melody Baby books. Like I said, I haven't looked at them, so I have no idea what they say. Um, it is November 6th. Let's look and see. Oh, took me right to December. What the meditation says for today. Boo oh, Burelli just jumped down, which means he's going to walk around. We're going to hear his little feet for the next 10 minutes. Boo Radley, it's about enjoying life. Are you enjoying life, Boo Radley? <laughs> he jumps down from the bed and then he just like walks around. Um, it's so funny because last night we were watching TV and Boo Radley kept on like, he, okay, so he'll jump up with me, he'll jump up with Alex. Last night, Alex was sitting in the chair and I was sitting on the couch, which is kind of like reverse. Like I usually sit in the chair and he sits on the couch. And so he'll sit with me, he'll sit with Alex, then he'll go to his bed, right? And this was after we give him his medicine and stuff like that. Well, last night he jumped off of Alex's chair and he, so he walks from the living room to the dining room, which is all connected, right? Down the hall, then to the bathroom, back from, to the bathroom, into the kitchen, around the kitchen, back in the living room, and he does these laps, right? And so, you hear what it sounds like, right? It's so funny. Rebel, you want to get back on the bed, honey? You want to get back on the bed? Look at his little head peering over at me. You want to get back on the bed, Boo Radley? He said, not yet. I'm still enjoying myself. So he did this literally about 20 times. And sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's slow. And I said, I go, why is he doing this tonight? And Alex goes, Peter, he does this every night. And I go, I, I know he does this, but like this much. He goes, he does about 20 or 30, 40 laps. <laughs> I mean, and literally it was that many. And he goes, and then he settles in his bed. He goes, watch, he's got about three or four more laps and he'll settle in his bed. <laughs> and he did it like three or four more times, five, six more times. And then he like went over to his bed and he lay down in his bed. He got like real cozy and then he was out. It was so cute. It was so cute. Okay, so enjoying life. Do something fun today. Well, I didn't know, first of all, that Dragula had started on Shudder. I love Dragula. I thought it was starting, like, in a couple weeks. Apparently, it started last week, and tonight is the second episode, or tomorrow's the second episode. So, do you want to come back up here, honey? 
before I get into the, the meditation. Okay, hold on, because he can jump up on the bat, but he acts like he can't. Then he has to be picked up. Come here, honey. Oh, there you go, sweetheart. Come here. Come here. You lift him up on the bed. Oh, he's going to try to jump while I'm picking him up. Okay, sweetheart. Oh, there you go, bud. Okay, you okay? Here's my prediction. In about three minutes, he'll jump back down. Well, hi. Do you want to say hi to the people again? He goes, am I a movie star in this one, too? You're a cute movie star is what you are. Are you having fun today? He said, I'm having fun hanging out with my dad. Your daddy's going to be home in just a little bit. He knows that word. Your daddy's going to be home in just a little bit, and you're going to hear his car pull into the garage, and then you're going to go crazy, aren't you? He said, I love when my dad comes home. The other thing he does is, when he's ready to come upstairs and he's had enough of us watching TV downstairs, he like walks up the steps, back down the steps, and then he comes in the living room and he just stands and looks at us like, okay, it's time to go to bed. Like you guys have stayed up too late watching TV. <laughs> By the way, so anyway, enjoying life. Um, I love Dragula. It's the only reason why I uh, subscribe to Shudder and I am so ready for to see it. I didn't know it had started already, but it started apparently last week and tonight or tomorrow is the second episode, so I'm real excited about that. Okay, I'm gonna start watching it tonight. Enjoy life, November 6th. Do something fun today. If you're relaxing, let yourself relax. Without guilt, without worrying about the work that is undone. If you are with loved ones, let yourself love them. Uh, and let them love you. Let yourself feel close. That's so powerful, isn't it? Like, do you ever have a hard time with the people that love you? Like, letting them love you? Letting people compliment you? Letting people be nice to you? I think it's something that, like, I really had a hard time with. My friend Tanya talks about it all the time because she's such a giver that she has a hard time with, like, letting people, you know, like, if we're out to dinner, I'll be like, let me get the dinner or whatever. She'll be like, no, no, no. I'm like, Tanya, you do so much for me. Let me get the dinner, right? And she'll say, like, I need to allow people to do more stuff for me, but it's so hard for me. I think it's such a truism for so many of us in life, you know, like for a long time, I had a hard time asking for help. I, that's something I've been forced to learn in sobriety is that I have to ask for help. He's like licking my leg, which is so sweet. Um, he, uh, or, uh, I, in sobriety, I had to learn that I had to ask for help, you know, and now today with like getting around and stuff like that, if I don't take an Uber, I have to ask a friend or, you know, a family member to take me somewhere. Um, and so, uh, I mean like, okay, this is a good example. Like I think, so when Alex was out of town or was he working that day? But I had to take Boo to the vet. I can't, this was months ago. And I mean, I, I, I don't know if you can. There probably are Ubers for pets, but I didn't want to take him in an Uber. So I called her friend Melissa. And Melissa was like, yeah, let me come and get you right now. And so she took us to the vet. She was so sweet. Um, but I think like, you know, 10 years ago, I would have been like, okay, I can't. I'm going to have to call Alex. I mean, like, you know, I would have tried to like move heaven and earth instead of just asking for help. If people can't help you, they will tell you that they can't help you. If they don't want to help you, they will tell you that they don't want to help you or they'll make an excuse. But if you ask for help, there are so many people out there that will help you. There are so many people that, where are you going, bud? Oh, he's coming back over here. There are some so many people that are just, you know, want to be nice. They want to help you. They want to compliment you and they want to love you. And I think that I have had to learn to be willing to accept that love and that kindness and that help. I've had to be willing to accept that people want to be nice to me and that's okay and that really speaks more of my own self-worth and that i don't think that i'm good enough that people would actually care about me and love me and i've really worked on that the last couple years he is so itching to get off this bed i can tell he's gonna jump down here in just a second um and so i've worked really really hard on that the last couple years to just ask for help and say i need help you know that was my thumbnail can you tell i need help <laughs> So anyway, I have, uh, I didn't know that until I did it, but when I did it, I knew that was my thumbnail. So anyway, um, uh, I don't always, like, it's so funny on this channel, because I, I sometimes make thumbnails and sometimes I don't. Sometimes, I told you, he's gonna, what are you doing? 14 years old and he runs around here like he's crazy. I love it. Look at him over here. He just laid down on my pillow. Why? Um, okay, so anyway, I, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I just had to learn that it's okay to ask for help, you know? I remember years ago, this woman that was helping me, and she said to me, like, what's the worst case, what's the worst thing that could happen if you ask me for help? And I was like, I don't know, you could say no. She's like, yep, I could, or I could say yes. And I remember that, and I think, 
there are so many people out there that want to love you and want to care about you and want to help you want to be nice, right? And that really speaks more about my own self-worth of not thinking that I'm good enough that people actually care about me. So let people care about you. Let people love you and accept it, you know? Okay, so let yourself enjoy your work for that can be pleasurable too. If you're doing something fun, let yourself enjoy it. What would feel good? This is one of my things too, is like when you go to do something fun and I used to do this as well, and then you complain, like you go to a pumpkin patch, right? It's like, God, it's really muddy here today or it's really cold today or it's this, you know, and it's like you pick out the pieces. I used to think that complaining was kind of funny until I was around a lot of people that complained and I was like, okay, this is a huge mirror in my face. Like, if this is what I'm like, I don't want to be this person. Like, I don't want to be complaining all the time about stuff. Like, I want to live in the moment and enjoy it. And then God started putting people into my life that were like, oh my God, like, I haven't been in a pumpkin patch and played in the mud in forever. And it's like, it's so nice today because it's crisp and cold outside. It's like, other people co complain about it, but then there'd be, I started meeting people that, like, the things that other people were complaining about it, they found joy in. And I thought, it's all perspective on how you look at the world, you know? It's how you choose to look at the world. If you're doing something fun, let yourself enjoy it. What would feel good? What would you enjoy? Is there a positive pleasure available? Indulge. Recovery is not solely about stopping the pain. Recovery is about learning to make ourselves feel better. Then it's about making ourselves feel good. Enjoy your day. Today I will do something fun, something I enjoy, something just for me. I will take responsibility for making myself feel good. And I think that's true, you know, it's like, I can remember I've shared the story a lot on here, a lot on my vlog, but mostly over here, where I had the conversation just down there in the living room with my mom, and she was saying something to me about how I wasn't busy enough when I was, like, working full-time, and, you know, in uh, graduate school, had an internship, was in a relationship, lived with my best friend and my boyfriend at the time, couldn't even find enough time for myself. And my mom was like, I just don't feel like I ever see you. And I finally looked at my mom and I said, I'm not responsible for your happiness. And I was like, where did that come from? And then she goes, what? And I said, mom, I'm not, I, I love you, but I'm not responsible for your happiness. And she goes, do you make, do you, do I make you feel that way? And I go, oh yeah, you do. You feel like, you make me feel like I don't ever do enough, no matter how hard I'm trying. She's like, well, I don't ever and I've had so many friends that I told that to, and they said if I had that conversation with my mom or my dad, they would say the complete opposite. But thankfully, my mom, why, honey? He said, well, I just want to sit here with you while you're filming videos. Look at how he looks at me. With his little paws in front of him. You can't see the little paws in front of him, but isn't that so sweet? Look at that. The little paws. Um, so, yeah, I, say, I want you on video so I can... Watch you back someday. He said, someday when? I said, someday don't even worry about it. We're not there yet. Yeah. You're 14 and you still act like you're two years old, running around the yard, barking at the neighbors. He's going up to all the neighbors today, wanting to say hi to all of them and stuff like that. Our neighbor across the street, he, it, he cannot get through a day unless he runs over to our yard. And he says hi to her and all this kind of stuff. He loves her so much. She's like our fa she's like his favorite neighbor. Like he sees her and he goes right over to her house and has to say hi to her. He loves her so much. Um what was I gonna say? Oh, this conversation with my mom. And so she looked at me and she goes, Do I make you feel that way? And I said, Oh yeah, absolutely. And she goes, Well, I don't ever want to make you feel that way. She goes, I don't want you to ever feel like I'm responsible or you're responsible for my happiness. And you know, we had a conversation about that. What I know today is I'm responsible for my happiness. I don't blame that on anybody else. I don't put that on anybody else, right? It's the same way as talking about sobriety. Like, I don't have the power to get somebody drunk, and I don't have the power to get them sober. I, I, I cannot make somebody do that. Just like somebody can't make me get drunk, and somebody can't make me get sober, that's on me. My happiness is on me, too. You know? It's real easy to point the finger 50 different ways instead of taking responsibility and say, okay, the ball's in my court. I gotta do something about this. If I'm not happy, I gotta fix that. So, this is a really good meditation out of something that I, I thought this was going to be kind of a cheesy meditation when I started it, and it really ended up being like a good meditation for me. So, let's all focus on making ourselves happier today, whether that's doing a, you know, a face mask right before we go to bed, or just listening to an audiobook for five minutes. It doesn't take a lot. You know, it can also just be like, if you have to work two jobs today, you know, 
going into that, I can remember some days I would go into work and I'd just be like, I'm not in a good headspace. And then I'd be like, okay, change it around, start your day over and go into it and be like, today I'm going to really enjoy my day and, and just try to enjoy little things like a cup of coffee or an interaction with a coworker that you get along with or whatever. And, you know, or even just like the outfit that you pick out to wear for the day or the shoes or whatever, you know, and just really try to learn to be a little bit happier each and every day. Um, life is fragile. It's a gift. And, um, each and every day I'm trying to be even more and more grateful for it and appreciate it even more. So, great meditation. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys so much and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.